Hey, it's Biddy Penny. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm hopping along with the November box of the month from the Not Too Shabby Shop. And my goodness, is it amazing. I did pull in a stitched snowflake from um, Juan Fawn that I'm going to be using today. It is in the shop at Not Too Shabby, so you can pick it up there as well. All right, so this is my card base. At first, on the 11 inch side, I cut it at five and a half, then I turn the paper and I'm gonna score it at two and one eighth and six and three eighths. This is a basic gatefold card. So again, two and one eighths, six and three eighths, and you've got a gatefold. So simple. Okay, I'm using both paper packs today. I'm making 10 shutter cards without dice. So just follow along with these cutting guides and you'll be good. Okay, this is my inside panel mat. You're able to get four mats per sheet of cardstock, okay? But keep that other piece that we trimmed off there because you're going to need it. These inside mats need to be at three by five and a half. So on the 11 inch side, I cut it at five and a half and then I turned it and cut three inches off each side and kept the remainders. This is just um, going to be one inch by 11 inch strips. So that's what you need for your belly bands. And now this sheet of paper, I am using this and cutting down some of my um, shutter mechanisms, which I decided to be two and a half by three inches. They always need to be three inches. That's your length um, for the shutter to close, to open and close across an A2 card size. The two and a half is up to you. That depends on how wide your opening is, like if it's a circle or a square, um, then that would dictate how wide that needs to be. But you can get like 10 of those from one sheet of cardstock, so you can get quite a few. You need two per card. Okay, on the three inch side, not the two and a half, but the three inch side, you're gonna score this at half an inch. And you'll do that for all of them. So as I was saying, you're gonna need two per card. Okay, let's look at some of this gorgeous paper, shall we? Wow. I loved it, so I wanted to use it all. Now, as I said before, I'm making 10 of these shutter cards, so I need to go through and pick 10 um, patterns that I want to be my inside panel and focal point. Uh, the part that we cut before were our mats, and now this is gonna be our inside panel. This uh, hack that I'm gonna show you and these dimensions that I came up with are ideal for six by six paper. I will show y'all in a minute, um, but you're gonna use like every piece of this six by six sheet of paper. You'll just have a tiny bit of scraps left over. So after I go through both paper packs and I pick my panels, I'm ready to go. So for these, the first thing I do is I cut it at two and three quarters. Put that other piece to the side, you're gonna need that. And then I cut it at five and a quarter. Okay, so two and three quarters first, and then by five and a quarter. So if this paper is directional, then you want it to be like upright at the, vertically upright at two and three quarter, and then turn it and cut it at five and a, half, a quarter. Okay, so I have those panels done. Now these were the leftovers. And what I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm flipping through them. I'm seeing which ones, which side I wanna use. Um, flipping most of them to be the opposite of whatever the panel was. And I'm gonna take these. And what I had decided to do with these is I pulled in my centering ruler and I measured this up to see where the center was to decide where to cut. Um, so these are going to be the outside decorative panels for our gatefold. And you need to cut this at one and five eighths and then five and a quarter. Okay, so that should be their final dimensions is one and five eighths by five and a quarter. 
to you guys today. There is a hop going on and I know you're going to want to hop along because there are so many fun and creative design team members working with this box today. It is hashtag driven. So what's brilliant is you can just click on that hashtag and it'll show you all the videos that are using that hashtag and they're all in one tidy place for you. I love hashtag hops and so make sure to check it out. These boxes are selling out quickly these days now that the word is getting out about them and they're just getting cuter and cuter all the time. Um, so you can buy this box individually or you can subscribe. If you're going to buy it individually, I suggest to do it earlier um, so you don't miss out. Okay, I am taking these panels and gluing them to their mat. You want to do this because you're going to want to die cut out a shape for your shutter. And it's just easier to do that if you already have your panel glued to your mat. And now these are the outside panels. And I did decide on some of them to flip the paper so I could have two different patterns on the outside. And you can tell I'm keeping a lot of my patterns together um, in this. I'm keeping my pieces together as I go. So I put these two down. I grab the inside mat that goes with this card. And I found that to be a really effective way to not get confused. <laughs> okay, so this is how we're gonna make the shutter part. We're gonna find the middle piece, which I remember I made mine at two and a half, so one and a quarter would be the midway. This is very important. Go to one inch with your center cut. So cut it down the center, but go all the way to a one inch mark. That is gonna give you your best folding experience <laughs> with a shutter card. It's gonna make it work a lot better. And make sure that you're cutting it not on the scored, you know, on the opposite end of the scored side, because that scored side is what's gonna stick to your card base. So you don't wanna cut it. And you can tell I'm just taking one and using it as my template for all of them. You're going to need two of these per card. I think I've said that three times now. <laughs> but yeah, you're going to want two of these per card. And these really do go together quickly. So I made all 10 of these cards in two hours, and I had never made shutter cards before. So, um, you know, and I was figuring out a lot of dimensions and figuring it out as I went. So I think that's a pretty quick turnaround. Basically like averages out to 20 minutes a card. And I think that's totally doable to have a nice fun fold. Okay, as you could tell there, I was stamping out my sentiment, which is gonna go inside my shutter. Okay, now I'm scoring and bone fold it. Wow, creasing. <laughs> my folds that's what i meant to say and here you can tell i already cut out a wonky circle for my center shutter part and i'm bringing in a low profile double-sided foam tape and i want to make sure i'm just putting it at the very top and the very bottom so it doesn't interfere with the shutter mechanism Guys, this is just perfect, I think, for my No Dies, No Problem series. For those of you who are maybe hopping along and you're not familiar with my channel, um, I have a No Dies, No Problem series where I make all kinds of cards without using dies, but figuring out different subject matters and things like this. And I thought this shutter card was a perfect No Dies, No Problem because you really don't need the dies. Now, for the center shutter part, I did do some testing on the side and if you had a punch you could definitely make a punch work for that center part so there's definitely ways around it or you could cut a square something like that or you guys if you do watch my dough dies no problem you know I've found ways to cut circles out of things just by tracing it would take you longer but it's it's doable Okay, so now I'm just leaving that there because I had used a combination of 
um, a tape runner and wet glue. If you use wet glue, you definitely want to leave it down. So you can tell I'm placing that right in the crease. You want to make sure it doesn't go over the fold line or else you'll have problems. But then you just um, fold it down, make sure it sticks real good. And voila, you've got a shutter card. This is not new, you guys. This has been around for a really long time. The only way it's really different here is I'm trying to maximize our paper and make sure we get the most out of our six by six sheets. So I did alter some of the dimensions just to make sure we could use a whole sheet of six by six and not have a whole bunch of scraps left over. So this is where I was trial and error figuring out how long those inside shutter pieces needed to be. All right, this is our belly band. And again, that measures one inch by 11 inches. I take it and I gently fold it around my card. I make sure it's loose. I like my belly bands loose because then people know to slide it off. Um, you know, those non card makers <laughs> that we all know. <laughs> All right, but what I like to do is slide it off, turn it around, and put the seam on the front where I'm gonna glue down my ephemera and hide the seam. And that's why I like to do my belly bands. So now this is the Lawn Fawn die that I thought would just be a perfect background for my ephemera. And so I'm gonna take, this ephemera was so much fun to play with. I loved it because it was different sizes, it's different shapes, you know, obviously it's different characters and like plants, flowers, snowflakes, deer, fox, raccoon, bear. It was just critter-tastic and so much fun to play with. Now with each piece, I would pop up a piece um, with foam tape, which I thought made them extra fun. Here I'm just putting glue where the contact is going to be with that belly band. Don't glue any of the rest down. <laughs> and then I've got my pieces. I used micropore tape just to make sure I could keep them all where I wanted them. And now like for this little fox, I'm going to pop it up with some foam tape. It just adds an extra touch of dimension and fun. And I think these cards are perfect for like the holidays, at least this design even, because it's like unwrapping a gift, you know, sliding the belly band off and opening it up and there's a surprise inside. It just screams holidays to me, a shutter card design does. So I'm so happy I have 10 of these now to send out to friends and loved ones. And this kit is so perfect. So I think regardless of what your um, religious affiliation might be, you could use this kit. So, you know, you could just wish people happy holidays or warm winter wishes and let them know that you're thinking of them, even if they are not celebrating Christmas. So I think it's really universal. It'd be great for birthday, winter birthdays and all kinds of things. I'm going to take you through and let you see all 10 cards. And just so you know, I will have the dimensions and everything up for this on my blog on um, November 1st, hopefully. <laughs> I'll definitely have it down below. I'm also going to have a link to Jamie's shop down below. Thanks so much for using my affiliate link, you guys. It helps me a lot and I really appreciate it. These cards are just so adorable. They make me happy just seeing them again. And yeah, I can't wait to send them. And each one is different and unique. Just so much fun. I can't wait to hop along, you guys, and see what everyone else has made. Definitely go over to Not Too Shabby. Check out the subscriptions. There are so many options over there. Jamie's really expanding and it's so much fun. Thanks for watching. See you next time.